Here's a lady. I mentioned how that UTIs, uh, urinary tract infections, are often uh, an accompaniment to high blood sugar and diabetes. She says, I had UTIs for years and never once had a doctor suggest that it may be related to being diabetic. That's kind of sad. I mean, I mean, I guess partly because I deal with this all the time, but if I were a doctor and someone came, with, came in with a UTI, obviously you want to help them, give them an antibiotic to fix things, but also mention that high blood sugar is the cause of many, many, probably most UTIs, especially when you're having them frequently. If you have one every 10 years, well, that's not such a big deal. If you're having two or three UTIs, again, urinary tract infections, if you're having two or three per year, uh, chances are you got high blood sugar and possibly high insulin. So she said, I, ha I also had two uh, UTIs for years. Uh, doctor never, never said uh, that it might be related to be, being diabetic. As long as I am careful with diet, no more infections. Rewind. As long as I'm careful with my diet, and what does she mean careful? She's not just saying, well, I eat lots of fruits and vegetables. She's saying I eat low carb. I cut way down on the, the, the foods that produce glucose spikes and high glucose, high blood sugar. I cut way down. As long as I'm careful with that, no more infections. Read my lips. <laughs> to quote George Bush, paraphrase George Bush, no more infections. She says, thank you for mentioning this. Well, and then one a lady underneath her comment said this, I also have had UTIs for years, even to the point of being on a low-dose antibiotic year-round. That's pretty severe when you've got to be taking low-dose antibiotics all the time, every day, year-round, for fear of getting another UTI. And there are uh, evidently people that do that. She says, since I have gotten my diabetes under control, I rarely have a UTI and I'm no longer on a continuous antibiotic. Good news that you've experienced the same thing. She's saying to the person who wrote the earlier comment. And uh, now I will say, I've had UTIs. I know this is mostly a woman's thing. I don't know why, but for some reason I've had UTIs and they are not fun. And uh, even when I went low carb, I continued to have them. Seemed like not as much, but still had them. It was only when I went even lower carb that they seemed to go away entirely. So sometimes going low carb is not enough. You've got to go lower carb still and really cut those carbs down. Uh, infection feeds on high glucose. High glucose equals the likelihood of infection. And UTIs are not natural. Some people just think, well, I'm getting older. I guess that's what happens. You get older, you get UTIs. No, you should be able to live to be 115 and not have any UTIs, but that'll never happen if you're eating a standard diet and your glucose is running very high. It'll never happen. You will get uh, UTIs, you will get other infections, and they will be slow to heal. Part of the problem is your body's made to combat infections so that the minute you start to get an infection, boom, the body swings into action and starts fixing it and sends out the right blood cells and, and starts healing itself. That's how it's supposed to work. But when you've got high glucose, your body just doesn't work like that. So you not only get more infections, they last much longer and you go running to the doctor, give me another antibiotic. Here we go again. Uh, not a good thing. And there are so many health issues that are related to diabetes. And I'll tell you the truth. Uh, I, there were a lot I didn't know. When I first started having problems with blood sugar, that's all I knew was I've got high blood sugar. I never dreamed other things in my life would be fixed. My arthritis in my hands would be fixed to the point where uh, it was no longer painful to shake people's hands. And I used to get frozen shoulders. I never heard a single diabetes doctor or nutritionist or a video say anything linking frozen shoulders to diabetes until I read something or heard it, I forget which, from Dr. Richard Bernstein, and he mentioned that frozen shoulders are associated so often 
with diabetes. And I thought, oh, okay. Well, that explains why I would get fro uh, frozen shoulders. Up until then, I didn't know. I just thought I was unlucky. And there are just numerous things that are associated. Folks, it's not healthy for you to run through life with high glucose and corresponding high insulin. It's just an unhealthy situation. You're essentially destroying yourself slow motion. The thing that's deceitful is it's not like it happens the next day. If you ate a donut and the next day you fall down in a diabetic coma and then you let a few weeks go by and you eat another donut and, then, and you fall down into another diabetic coma, <laughs> you'd stop eating donuts. You can get by with eating trash and poisoning your body for year after year after year and you still feel pretty good. But things start to break down when you get older, usually. And there are some that they, it starts to break down sooner. I don't know why that is, but for some people, by the time they're 35, they're a mess. Now, I started getting my arthritis in my early 40s and other issues. And diabetes, uh, diabetes came at me full steam, roaring at me in my late 40s. So I didn't have to wait too long before my body started to break down. But for some people, it, it'll take longer. Here's an individual who says, I've been able to control my blood sugar in the normal range for a couple of weeks now with diet. I even stopped my weight loss meds to prove to myself this is the diet that's making me lose weight and not the meds. So they were taking uh, meds to help them lose weight. And then they said, well, let's just see what happens without the meds. And they still lost weight. My fasting glucose has been in the low to mid high 90s now, which is a new trend for me. So waking up in the morning in the 90s, which is excellent. Uh, what I have noticed, they say, is I get a rise every morning after coffee and some half and half. By the time I get to work, I'm up to around 124, and then by 11 a.m., I'm under 100 for most of the day until I eat. Is this a normal rise every morning? I'm losing lots of weight. I'm starting to think my liver is cleaning itself out after years of being abused with food. So they're saying everything looks good. I'm losing weight. My blood sugar is doing better, but when I wake up, it starts rising. Well, of course, that's called the, da the dawn phenomenon. And, uh, phenomenon. It, it differs with some people. Some people, by the time they wake up, they're much higher than they were when they went to bed. And that just drives them crazy. It, it just seems unreasonable. It's not right. I haven't even eaten all night. And now I, I went to bed at 98 and I wake up at 122. What is going on? Now, that's never been my experience. Usually when I wake up in the morning, I'm probably a bit lower than I was when I went to bed. So maybe I go to bed around 98, I wake up around 92, 88, whatever. But I do tend to rise. I get that uh, dawn phenomenon to some degree. But it usually happens after I wake up. Of course, I wake up fairly early, 6.30, 6 6.15, 7, depends on how late I went to bed. Usually, if I will test myself immediately, I'll be fairly pleased with my blood sugar. But if I wait an hour and test myself, I'll notice it's going up, and then it's going up some more. And since I don't normally eat breakfast, but I have some coffee with cream and butter in it, that, that doesn't stop it from going up. It, it still goes up. You could be under the impression the coffee's making it go up, just, uh, just like this individual says, well, I have coffee, and it goes up. Chances are it's not the coffee at all. I mean, it'd be an easy thing to prove. Just don't drink the coffee one day and see where it goes. But chances are it was on its way up anyway, and the coffee doesn't really do much one way or the other, and it just continues to go up till around 11, and that's been my experience as well. Usually around 11, it starts to go back down. By 12.30, 1 o'clock, if I test myself just before eating lunch, it's on its way down again. So we all experience that, but some people it's, it's very... It's a very major rise. So you go to bed at 98, you wake up at 130, and by 10, 30, 11, you're up to 150, 160. 
And then it starts going down and you're like, ah, that just doesn't seem right. Well, there are a lot of technical reasons, but it is a fairly normal phenomenon and it does mediate a bit. It, it kind of flattens out, never totally flat, but it, it's less of a factor as you get your liver lean and, and burn off the fat from your liver and your pancreas. So, uh, but, you know, speaking about the fact that your blood sugar was going up anyway, so you drink coffee and it continues to go up, and it, that can be a little deceiving. You say, aha, it's that terrible coffee. No, it's not. Your blood sugar was just going up. And I think the same thing can be true. After a meal, now, for example, some people will say, I can go for a walk and my blood sugar drops like a stone. That may be due to the walk, but it may be due to the fact that your blood sugar was already headed down anyway. In my earlier days, especially when I ate higher carb meals, my blood sugar would rise up to uh, for about an hour after eating and then it would start to drop. So if I say, well, I'm going to go for a walk after eating and I wait a little bit, and then I go for my walk and I notice my blood sugar is down. Well, it may not be that the walk did all of that. It may be it was going down anyway because that's what it will eventually do. So I happened to catch it <laughs> at a point where it was headed down. So anyway, this individual is doing, doing well. And I would guess that they probably got a good, decent A1C and... Uh, I think uh, someone mentioned, I think it was Dr. Uh, Ken Berry talks about uh, vitamin P, which is patience. And sometimes we need to take a good dose of vitamin P, patience, and just let the process work. And it will work. It's like the, uh, the individual who left a comment and said, this just works. Yes, it does, my friend. Uh, we've seen it again and again and again. All kinds of people from all kinds of cultures and climates and uh, races. Uh, it doesn't matter what your race, what your culture, what your language. It just works as part of the human condition. And basically, the idea is real simple. It's not that carbohydrates are evil, not that it is a terrible sin to ever eat some brown rice or a sweet potato. But when you are overdosing and overindulging in carbohydrates, the reasonable response would be to just slash those carbs significantly and get yourself healed. And then maybe you can reintroduce some of those carbs, not the candies, uh, not the white flour products for sure, not even too much of the whole wheat products, but you might get away with a few beans. You might get away with a half of a sweet potato. Uh, that's on you to experiment and see what you can and what you cannot get away with and what Mike approves and what he does not. Mike being your glucose meter, Mike the meter, we call him around here. But when you first get diabetes or are acknowledged as being diabetic by your doctor, in other words, you're diagnosed, that's not time, time to play around. That's not, time to see, uh, that's not the time to see what can I get away with. No. It's how radical can I get to get this thing down and get back to normality, get back to normality. And my friend, when it comes to your health, normal is a beautiful place to be. You may have noticed that sometimes YouTube recommends videos from us with thumbnails that look like this. And yet when you click on the thumbnails, there's no video. It is an audio only Bible study. So why do we offer these on YouTube? These audio-only Bible studies are easier for us to produce, and they are much easier for you to digest. You do not have to sit in front of your computer to follow them. You can listen to them through earbuds while you go for a walk, or you can play them in your car player while you drive in your car. Or you can get a portable Bluetooth speaker like these and play them in your kitchen while you prepare meals, or you can play them while sitting in your favorite easy chair as you sip your tea. I recently purchased this little baby for less than $20, and I was really impressed. It paired easily with my phone, it has great sound, and even has a little bit of bass. Amazon has tons of inexpensive Bluetooth speakers like these and Bluetooth radios. So pick up one and join Ben and me for our morning Bible studies and learn God's Word with us.